Hi there, welcome to the Night Vision Open Forum. We are very excited to see all of you here this afternoon and uh, really appreciate you taking the time to be with us. Night Vision is gonna affect so many folks or so many folks in the organization and we wanna make sure we're, we're giving you information along the way. Next slide, please. All right, so just uh, some housekeeping items. Wanted to let you know that you can certainly ask questions. There's a Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom window. And if you could uh, place your questions there, you can certainly upvote questions that you want to make sure that we prioritize as we're answering them. If there are questions that we don't get to, we'll, we'll plan to uh, either put them on our website, or if you want a, a question and a response to your, your, you want a direct response, please make sure that you put your name in the question. I know most folks ask anonymously, but if you want a response and we haven't gotten to your question yet, before we wrap up, please put your name in there. All right, uh, next slide, please. So just a quick overview of what we're gonna talk about for the next hour and a, hour and a half or so. Uh, first, we're gonna have a, a brief message from Dr. Cartwright on night vision. We're gonna hear from uh, Gerald Hector, who's our one of our executive sponsors for night vision. We'll have a, a brief overview for night vision. We'll talk about the service enhancement transformation. Uh, we'll have a good bit of information around human resources. We're excited to see some, some real specifics there. And then we'll spend some time answering your questions. All right. So now we're going to move on to, and hear a little bit from President Cartwright. Hello, Knights. UCF aspires to be one of the nation's and the world's leading public metropolitan research universities. With the introduction of night vision, it is clear that we are moving in the right direction. This program will provide a pathway to excellence by improving our administrative infrastructure systems that drive operational excellence efficiency, and effectiveness. Our university has been growing at an incredible rate, and the technology that once worked for us should not be expected to work for us moving forward. Night vision will allow us to modernize and simplify our technology, improve transparency across the campus community, and provide common processes for data sharing. The implementation of this program is an investment in our university's future and will affect everyone on campus. Because of that, it is important that we come together to support this change. The success of night vision will depend on a collective spirit of trust, engagement, and accountability. I invite you to visit the Get Involved page to discover ways in which you can play a direct role in this integral program. I want to thank everyone who has made night vision possible for your contributions to date and in the future. And with that, Go Knights and charge on. Hello, Knights. Thank you, President Cartwright. Uh, one, one more piece of housekeeping before I pass it to Gerald, and that is that there, is, there are live captions, so you can go down, there's an icon at the bottom of your screen if you want to see subtitles, and we are recording today, so I wanted to make sure everyone was aware of that. So Gerald, thank you for being here. We would love to hear some words on night vision from you. Thank you, Sherry, and welcome everyone. Uh, glad that you could all join us to be a part of this discussion and this update. As Dr. Cartwright just so eloquently stated, Night Vision is a major project here at the university. It is coming to us at a time where several things are happening, new leadership coming out of a pandemic, a whole host of things have come together that I call it a seminal moment. And as one of the executive sponsors, my other colleagues being Provost Johnson and CIO Hall, what we are trying to do here is to ensure that we are transparent, as effective in our communications, not only just by disseminating information, but be strategic in our communications and to create the opportunities for the campus in general to ask questions and also to be more informed as things move along. This is a massive project. Not only is this just about an ERP implementation, we're also taking a look at how we deliver services across the campus, and more importantly, how we become more operationally effective. We are off to a very good start, and I'd like to publicly thank the team, uh, Sherry Herring, Kathy Mitchell, Maureen Bender, and a whole host of others. Uh, please don't, I, if I overlook someone, charge it to my head, not to my heart, but there are so many people that are working towards this goal. And it's really admirable as a new executive coming in to see the teamwork, the collaboration, and quite frankly, the debates that are taking place right now. 
As we go into this presentation today, I, I hope that you will jot down your notes and ask questions. Uh, these forums are here for you to ask said questions so that we can all be informed. And quite frankly, those of us that attend, we can become vision carriers for this process. This process is gonna involve all of us and at the end of the day will be, be a benefit for all of us. So as we go into the meeting today, please keep an open mind and have your questions answered. And always remember that there's always channels you can reach out if questions come up while you're driving home, while you're at home or something that basically comes up here at work. We are here for you. We wanna make sure that we remain informed but more importantly, that we do this together. Because when we think about it, when all is said and done, teamwork makes the dream work. So Sherry, with that, I will stop there and uh, we'll carry on with the presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, AVP Hector. We appreciate your comments and your support throughout this whole process. So uh, we're gonna go on to the next slide and give you a little bit of update on night vision. First thing we wanna say is that Workday is coming. Workday is a big part of night vision. We can't talk about night vision without talking about Workday. We might even say that Workday is the star of the night vision show. We're excited about using best practices in our work, having a modern and unified system, having a user-friendly and mobile-ready interface, managing and reporting on time and many other functions in a very transparent way. However, we know that there is a lot more to night vision than just implementing the software. Next slide, please. So our mission is to transform the way that we work here at UCF through transparent, efficient, and compliant best practices. And those words are highlighted for a reason. They are very important. And you'll see when we get to our, um, our guiding principles that they're, they're embedded in there. So transform the way we work through transparent, efficient, and compliant best practices, state-of-the-art technologies to enhance services so that services are better, and business outcomes so that our outcomes are better, supporting excellence in education and research. So education and research is certainly the priority here at the university as it should be. And we certainly have that incorporated into our mission. Next slide, please. So, um, You've heard that to do this, we have to implement a cloud ERP system. However, there is a lot more to it. So to support, support the mission, Night Vision team is working on a number of important scope elements. First and foremost, we'll be implementing the Workday Cloud Enterprise Resource Planning System, which is abbreviated ERP. And our first phase is to implement the HR and finance functions. But there are a lot more functions that we're putting into um, or functions that are part of that HR and finance uh, ecosystem. So just there are 25 modules that we're implementing. Uh, certainly we have uh, learning management, performance management, prism analytics and adaptive phase two. Those will come after Ju July of 2022. The, the core functions of HR and finance will come in July of 2022. Next slide or next. Um, and you've heard about SET. This is the HR and finance service enhancement transformation. This will transform the way we work, we organize our work, improving consistency, compliance, and quality of services to colleges and units. And you'll hear more about this in a few minutes from Maureen Bender. <clears throat> Reporting and analytics. This is a large endeavor to implement an enterprise-wide data warehouse, enterprise advanced analytics, data governance across the organization. So it will have a significant impact on allowing you to get information, data that you need from multiple systems, including Workday, to um, make the best decisions possible based on data. Custom applications replacement. Over the years, we built many, many custom applications in PeopleSoft. Some of them, you, some of you use them every single day. In order to turn off PeopleSoft and turn on Workday, we really need to find a way to replace those functions. Some functions will be replaced by Workday. Other functions, we will have to find a third party application. So another piece of software to integrate with that will replace that function. Some functions might go away due to business process changes or policy changes. And then other functions, we may have to custom build uh, a new application. So that is a large effort. Uh, right now, there's around 55 things that are not going to be replaced by Workday that we'll need to accommodate over the next few years. Not all of those will need to be replaced before next summer. 
but it is something that's on our radar, our radar and we're working to kick off that project soon. And then enterprise standard tools. This is something that kind of happens in the background, but it's super important to our, our security, to the functionality of Workday, uh, to how we connect things to each other and get our information uh, from one system to another. So SailPoint Identity and Access Management System, that's going to improve our security, our single sign-on, our identity management, and Informatica integrations and IPA man IPI management, API management, <laughs> will be um, will help us integrate uh, systems together so we can pass data between systems and get uh, the information we need at the right place. And then adaptive planning, finally. We have, uh, we have gone live with phase one for adaptive planning and many of you are already using it. And then there will be a phase two that happens starting in July of next year um, and we'll, we'll finish up sometime in the fall of next year where we uh, upgrade the or update the account structure based on what we build in Workday. Next slide. So our guiding principles, uh, we just want to start and say simplification and standardization. We want to use common practices across the organization and we want to simplify. So we're really using that Workday first mindset, working to have uh, when somebody wants a, a certain function, we want to make sure that we're we're considering Workday, and if if Workday can do it, we want to make sure that we're use it, using that functionality that we just purchased. We want to leverage that uh, transformative change. We do expect transformative change. We plan to transform the way we work here at UCF through Workday and the processes that come out of that, but also through the set and some of the other. Uh, the custom apps and reporting and analytics, it will transform the way we get information and the way we work together. Measure, measurable results. We do um, plan on having better reporting and also measuring not only the performance of this project, but the performances of, of performance of the services that we're providing out of this project. So the we expect HR and finance services to improve and to be more consistent. And we expect to measure those and be reporting on those. Transparent and inclusive. Inclusive, you know, we want to make sure that we're including folks in providing feedback, providing input in the testing phase, and also that we're making decisions in a transparent way. So we are documenting the way we're making decisions, and we are working to involve key uh, stakeholders in those decisions so that they uh, have input and that there's a, a common understanding of the needs of the organization. And then enhanced, enhanced accountability. This speaks to the governance for this project. We have a large number of folks from across the university who are involved in uh, supporting this project, as well as providing guidance and oversight to us uh, on the project team. So we appreciate that. And we are making sure that we're um, communicating the decisions that are being made in the most appropriate way. And we are early on in the project. So some of those decisions have not been made yet. And you'll hear more about those in the future. Next slide, please. All right, for this one, um, as we move forward, we know that the work we do impacts virtually everyone on campus. So to better support faculty, staff, and students through the upcoming changes, the Campus Community Advisory Group, which we're calling CCAG, was established to help the project team understand potential impacts and make decisions in the best interest of the university as a whole. As you can see, many, many groups are represented as, as needs arise, we will add more. Um, Ceresa Cruz is the chairperson for this advisory group, and we have more than 40 of your colleagues also currently participating. Next slide. And this is just a, a little illustration that shows the journey that we're on. As you can see from where Nitro is standing, we are early on in that journey. We have um, Adaptive that has gone live just recently. We'll be kicking off the custom applications replacement effort soon. The set or the service enhancement transformation assessment is wrapping up and we are working diligently on the workday reporting and analytics and enterprise tools implementations needed for the first major launch next summer. We have a great team assembled and we're looking forward to sharing more with you as we move forward and, and hopefully you'll join in the next quarter when we when we come back to you for with another open forum. Next slide please. 
So now I'm going to pass it over to Maureen Binder, our Chief Human Resources Officer, and she is going to share some about the service enhancement transformation. Thank you, Sherry. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for spending the afternoon with us to hear more about Workday and SET in the overall project. Really appreciate your time. So I want to talk about service enhancement transformation. And as you heard President Cartwright talk about earlier in the video, this initiative, both Workday and SET, is really designed to help the university achieve and align with the goals that he has talked about, becoming the best metropolitan research university in the nation and the world. And so our vision is to enhance HR and finance service quality, transparency, effectiveness, effectiveness and efficiency by aligning our organizational structure and the way we deliver services for HR and finance with best practices to better meet our needs and provide better services to the colleges and the units. So this initiative is directly aligned with helping President Cartwright work towards and achieve the goals that he has for UCF. And so it's very exciting that we're in this place right now where we're able to look at the new technology that Workday brings us and build upon that in order to improve our administrative efficiencies and effectiveness. Next slide, please. So when we talk about service enhancement transformation, what we're really talking about, and this is really embedded in the mission that Sherry just went over overall for Workday, customer service oriented, improved quality and compliance, clear accountability, university-wide consistency, clear career paths for those individuals who will be performing the HR functions and the finance functions in, in the structure, whatever we end up with in terms of how we organize to better use the technology and to be more streamlined, more effective, um, more efficient. Again, using the technology that Workday brings us. So we hope to improve the customer experience and the employee experience. As you know, we have many different stakeholders. We have students, we have faculty, we have staff, we have applicants, candidates for jobs, retirees and alumni. Lots of different stakeholders that we hope that this initiative will improve the quality of the service and the experience they have in working with us through HR tasks as well as finance tasks. Next slide, please. So where are we? What is the next phase and where are we going? Many of you participated in interviews. We received a lot of good information. We sent out a survey an activity survey, what's everybody doing? What kinds of HR tasks and responsibilities are you performing in your job, as well as finance tasks and responsibilities? Taking the interview information and the data analysis, we're able to determine how many people are providing services in the HR area, how many are providing services in the finance area, and really determine how many FTE are currently doing that work? And then we're overlaying that with, well, how does Workday work? And how do we need to organize to better take advantage of some of the efficiencies that Workday can bring to us? We're also looking at best practices. What are the best practices at universities around the country who are similarly situated as UCF? Big, large, complex research universities. And then we're coming up with recommendations and Accenture is giving us recommendations. They're our partner in this first phase of SET. And we're currently looking at the recommendations they have given us. We're going to be socializing those with different groups. And then we will refine those recommendations to fit UCF and to fit our culture and the goals that President Cartwright has for us. We will then seek leadership approval and then we'll plan the next phase. What is the timing going to be? What will the implementation timeline look like? And we'll start moving toward that. All coordinated with the Workday technology transformation as well. And that is it for me. I'll turn it over now to Becky Moulton. Hello everyone and good afternoon. My name is Becky Moulton. 
and I am the HCM Workstream Lead for the implementation of Workday here at UCF. I'm super excited and hopefully you'll feel my enthusiasm as I go through this presentation. Um, this project is long overdue in my opinion and something that I've been striving um, to get going here at UCF for a very long time. Uh, way back in the day, I was part of the original implementation team of PeopleSoft and for years, I've been saying it's time to reboot or move on to another system. All of my bosses have heard it along the way, so I am just extremely pleased to be a part of this process and to help move us into the next phase here at UCF. Through the project, I have several mantras that um, I know people in meetings get tired of hearing me say. Uh, Sherry alluded to some of them earlier as part of our guiding principles, but I say it and I say it very often, workday first, why not workday? Um, when folks question, you know, if we should do this or we shouldn't do that, um, I just always go back to those words and try to focus the conversation in that direction. There are other things I tell the team as well, such as um, think about your dream process. Um, when we're talking through processes and how we do certain things and human resources, I say, okay, that's how we do it now, but how do we want to do it in the future? Do we really you know, need all these levels of approvals? Um, I really want you to think outside of the box and think about the best, most efficient way to get our, ta our tasks completed. So um, yes, people get tired of hearing me say that, but I am truly um, delighted to, to help guide the, the discussion in that direction. Next slide. All right, this is my team. Um, Currently, um, we have started working together. Um, I have a great team uh, and we have a lead over all the different um, aspects of HCM. Um, the only one we have not started yet is performance management, but I have Aisha, who is our benefits lead, um, Isha, who is our payroll and a payroll accounting lead, Jamie, who's recruiting, onboarding and talent, Monica, who is absence and time tracking, Aubrey, who is learning management, and Molly Myers, who is HCM core and compensation. Um, in addition, we have Carla, who is a focus on academic affairs issues. Um, we have Peggy Goddard, who is just joining us um, very soon, who is over student employment. And then we have the pleasure of also having a student working with us, Giovanna, who is a graduate student helping us through all of our different processes. So um, try to remember these names. And of course, you know, the presentation will be posted online so you have access to it. Um, truly, I want you to put all those names to memory. And when you have a question, you can reach out to any of us. And if you know it's in a particular area, you can reach out to that person directly. Um, we're here to listen to you, to hear you, and to work with you. So um, I wanted to take a moment to introduce you to all of them. Thank you. Next slide, please. Uh, our timeline. Um, you've probably seen this slide in, in, in different various ways, but um, we are, as you can see, at the still the very, very beginning stages of this project. Um, sometimes I hear a comment here or there that makes me feel people think we are much further in this process than we are, and we're really not. <laughs> we're still in the infancy of this project. Uh, there's so much work to be done um, and so many decisions to be made. Uh, I can't count them all. Um, it is really quite overwhelming and daunting, but exciting at the same time. So right now we're in the very beginning where we are truly um, just getting data. Um, you know, we have to get all of that data from PeopleSoft and get that data into Workday. That's a really big project. And the team has been working very hard um, with the conversion team, the HR team, finance is kicking in there as well. Um, and we're just trying to get all that data in a manageable format because of course, obviously PeopleSoft and Workday are not the same thing. Um, they are very, very different. And so we have to kind of take it from one format and try to get it to another format um, and make the best of it. 
and things are changing. Um, I can say 100% that what we do in PeopleSoft for HR is not what we're going to be doing in Workday for HR. It is it's very different. Um, so, you know, just coming up with that structure, it's been um, very uh, challenging. And, you know, we're taking that challenge and we're moving forward. But I want to assure everyone that we haven't designed um, how things are going to work in Workday. Uh, we're just not there yet. So um, rest assured that we're not making decisions without talking to campus. Um, we're simply getting data in place and making some very uh, low level foundational type decisions so we can get the data in there. The one thing I find really exciting about this change, um, Workday is again, so different. Uh, when we do things in PeopleSoft, um, we have to make that decision up front. Um, we're doing customization, right? So we have to kind of decide exactly how we want it to be. Um, and then we turn it over for development. We test it. We put it out to the public to use. Um, and then from there, we really can't change it very much because a lot of work has already gone into that. Um, so what I love about Workday is it is configurable on the fly. So those um, things that we need to change along the way, we can change them quickly. Um, it's really quite amazing um, working with our partners, Accenture is our partners. Um, you know, they have, my team is very used to the long drawn out process. And, you know, Accenture brings us back to reality and says, look, you know, we can change that on the fly. That is no big deal. We can add this approval or this routing or this notification. Um, and that is just so different. So again, we're just kind of getting the data going, um, but we are coming upon our next big phase, which is configuration and prototype. And this is really where the rubber meets the road and we will be getting people more involved so that they can help us to design what we want our systems to be in the future. Next slide, please. Um, a few benefits to Workday. Um, again, these are, you, you've kind of heard these through our guiding principles, but we really are working um, to make things um, more efficient here at UCF. And we're, we would like to eliminate as many duplicate systems as possible. Um, you know, going through this process, it's been quite amazing to hear people say, uh, you know, my department uses this recruiting solution or we use this recruiting solution, et cetera, to know that the university uses multiple recruiting systems for employees, not students. Um, we're, not, we're not on the student side, but the HR side. Um, and so we really want to try to eliminate as many of those duplicate systems as possible. Um, we do want to streamline business process. So um, again, you know, I get questions all the time in my, in my everyday role um, that I left to come to the project. But, you know, people reach out to me, they know me, I've been around a long time, and they'll say, does HR really say that we have to do this? And, you know, and I'm like, well, maybe not, that might just be within your department, that that's a procedure. Um, so streamlining the business process to be uniform around campus, I think is really important because it does lead to um, frustration at times, you know, especially for employees who may transfer from one department to another, things might be handled differently. Um, so that's another thing we want to work on. Uh, eliminating as much paper as possible. Um, that is, has always been a wish of mine. And I know um, it is a wish of everyone here as, as the same, I'm quite certain. Um, implement the usage of dashboards and reports. We want to put information at your fingertips. Um, one thing you will hear us often say, again, this is another mantra, I suppose, and it was from one of our friends at Accenture, is if it's a blue, it's a clue. Um, and that is Workday. Within Workday, you'll have access to data and everything that's blue is a hyperlink and you can drill down into the data. It's really quite amazing how you can go from looking at one specific thing all the way down to the granular detail just by a couple of clicks. Um, so that's really quite amazing. Amazing, And just increasing the transparency and access to employee data. 
um, have having worked in um, PeopleSoft in the HRIS area for as many years as I have. That's one thing, you know, I know departments complain about, you know, getting access to all the information. We try to create reports for you to use and, and things of that nature, but I know it's not perfect and I wouldn't even try to pretend that it is. So I'm, I'm hopeful with this project that we will have that access to data for you as, as, a, as a supervisor, as a manager, as a leader, you'll be able to see the, the employees in your department and you'll be able to really get the information you need to make all the best business decisions that you can. Next slide, please. And just impact to the community. Um, Self-service is awesome within Workday. It really is very cool and it's completely mobile friendly. Um, right now, at least the last time I tried to look, you couldn't even view your paycheck from an Apple iPhone. Um, maybe you can now, I'm not sure. Uh, however, it, it just wasn't very mobile friendly um, and, and Workday truly is. It's amazing the things you can do. Um, if you're a supervisor and an employee is requesting a day off, a vacation day, imagine you can approve that from your cell phone when you're in a meeting or, or whatever. It's, it's really a nice tool to have. Um, again, it gets back to the data. Data is so important to us and it's really changed over the last few years. Um, we're trying to make critical decisions with out of date data or inconsistent data. And that's been very challenging. And then I, I love the fact that within Workday, um, we don't have to make everything an approval. Sometimes you just want someone to be aware and you don't need them to approve it. And so we've all have heard that term rubber stamping. Um, we add people into an approval chain and they rubber stamp it. Really, it's just to let them know. And with Workday, we do have the ability to just send notifications. I think that is just a phenomenal um, way to do business because if a person doesn't really need to approve it, but they need to know about it, we can just send them a notification and that process can move on in the approval chain and not wait for that final approval. Next slide, please. This is a very um, high level screenshot, if you will, of employee self-service. Um, I preface this by saying, again, we are nowhere close to a final look and feel of Workday. We're, it's not even really considered at this point. But I really wanted you to, to feel my enthusiasm and to see something. So I put this out here for people to see. And this is a screenshot from um, a tenant within Workday. Um, it's a fictional university, but they did, you know, make it look a little more UCF-ish and um, put our Pegasus and everything. So you can see within self-service, you have um, applications. So if you need to um, request a vacation day, if you need to uh, report sick time, you know, anything of that nature, you're going to be able to do those types of things through the applications. And, you know, you will have access to, you know, do things such as change your address or update your W-4 or direct deposit, et cetera. Um, again, we really haven't designed all of that yet. So it's just um, for show here. And we will, you know, definitely be making those decisions of everything that isn't going to be an application within the system. One thing I really enjoy about um, this, self-service page. Um, when you get tasks and you complete things in the system, um, you will get email to your work email. But if you're anything like me, you get a lot of email in a day. And sometimes you might lose an email in there or two. Um, I wouldn't admit that out loud. But um, at the top of the screen, on the top right, you can see it's, it's rather small in the screenshot. Um, but you can sign into Workday and all of your notifications and tasks will be here. So I personally think that's a great thing. Um, others say, you know, I probably won't be signing into Workday every day and they would prefer an email. 
but to me to know I can sign into the system and be directed at exactly what I need to complete, I think that's phenomenal. So I'm super pumped about that. Um, and I hope everybody will be too, just like me. Um, and then next I'm going to show you, um, it's a little, two little videos. Um, again, nothing fancy, it's very foundational, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what we're looking at so far when it comes to um, asking for some vacation time. So we're gonna have an employee uh, request vacation and then the next little video will be a supervisor approving that vacation. So next slide, please. All right. Now this is again, employee self-service and we have an employee who wants to request some absence. They click the absence icon. They have choices here. Um, so they can click request absence and the calendar will pop up. They will actually be able to see information in this calendar. They'll be able to see their coworkers and whatnot. Um, but in this example, they're requesting a long Memorial Day weekend. They're highlighting the days that they would like to take off. You can see there's a holiday there too. So here they're picking what type of leave they want to request and they're requesting annual leave and they, you can review the dates and then you're gonna submit it. And you can see um, that it's, you know, the hours, 24 hours total, and they can enter comments. So they're gonna say, hey, I'm requesting this time off, three vacation days. And they'll type in their comments. They can actually attach files we think we haven't really fully designed it yet, but there is a possibility like, let's say a jury summons or something. And when they get that all finished, they can click the submit button. With that, the approval is off to their boss. Um, you know, the system is obviously configured um, and it knows the organizational structure. So an email is gonna be generated to their boss and they can see right from the screen that this time has been submitted. It's a little small, I realize, but it says submitted. Um, and now their, their boss will get that task. They will again, get an email that they can go directly to from their email or within Workday, they'll have the task um, that will show up in their self-service window. So now we'll look at um, the, uh, the supervisor approving that time. All right, so now Nitro Supervisor has signed into the system and you can see I have an inbox task and it's to approve time for Nitro employee. So they click that link, it takes them there and they can see, all right, um, you know, at the top there is actually a dashboard where they could see multiple employees, if multiple employees have days off, etc. They can look over the details, um, they can even view the balances. Um, that's right there. So they can click view balances to say, hey, uh, you know, does, does Nitro really have that much leave that they can take three days off, et cetera? Um, and so they can see the information and they can type a comment as well if they so choose, um, if, if it's needed. And they can say, um, yeah, you got enough leave. I'll approve that. Um, they would type in that information and then they would um, approve the time. And once they click approve, then it, that vacation time has been requested, has been approved, and it's on a calendar. The calendars are really quite amazing. Um, you know, you can sign in and look at your calendar and you can see your team. Um, so I think that's great when you're planning to take a day off and you can say, hey, oh, three of my coworkers are out. Perhaps today isn't the best day for me to ask off. But regardless, it's very exciting. And just think about how we do this today, right? In some departments, you send an email, you send a text, you, you might have a, an Excel spreadsheet kept on a shared drive that everybody requests time. Um, some departments may have homegrown systems that they request time, et cetera. But right here, we'll be able to do it in Workday. It will be on calendars. It will flow through to timekeeping. 
So nobody has to enter that time again into timekeeping. It's, it's there, you've requested it, it flows over, et cetera. So um, it's a whole new world <laughs> from what we're used to today. Next slide, please. Questions from the community, some things that I've heard. Um, can we please keep our paper lappers? Said no one ever. <laughs> I had to put that in kind of as a joke, but um, no, paper will be going away. We will be doing our timekeeping in, in the system. Uh, and, you know, you can frame it, keep it as a souvenir, um, but um, I will be throwing those out the door. Uh, will we use Kronos? Well, that hasn't really been decided yet. Um, Kronos is used to part, uh, across parts of campus. Um, and we're still in the discovery phase, um, trying to see if we can meet the needs of the Kronos community through Workday. Um, and we're getting really close to making that decision. And I think um, the folks who use Kronos have been really um, pleased with what we've been able to show them in Workday. But that isn't Becky's decision to make. And um, you know, we will be engaging that conversation and coming out with a final answer. Um, will the campus community participate in design and testing? A hundred percent. Really soon, we're going to start working with the CCAG um, to answer questions with us, to show things to, to ask, you know, just to have them participate. Um, when we have the CMP um, configuration and prototype database, that's again, like I said, when the rubber meets the road and we start um, really getting out there with our road shows and and testing and you know getting all of that input from people. Um, we need a system that works for all of us. So again, Becky will not be making those decisions, but I will be asking those hard questions of, do we really need to do this? Or is that really the best use of everybody's time, et cetera, whatever. Um, my goal is to make everybody think when we're making those decisions. Um, so access will be coming soon um, in, in a testing environment. Of, um, of course, we're nowhere near a production environment. Um, will it be training? Yes. Um, the, the Night Vision team actually has a training lead, and we will um, be doing training um, down the road when we get there. And will every employee need to use Workday? Absolutely. Um, as an employee of the university, you're going to want to look at your paycheck. You're going to want to take vacation time. Uh, you might have to report sick time, et cetera. So yes, everybody will be using Workday in some way. Next slide, please. Um, again, next steps, I go back to the configuration prototype. You've heard me say it several times. Um, it's gonna be really critical for us um, to start working with you to answer questions and to design a system that works. Um, so that's when we're going to be testing and gaining that feedback and discussing the current issues uh, to make sure that we can um, do what we need to do. Um, that's the most important part. And then um, my team helped me come up with this one because I was, you know, I like little catchy things like if it's blue, it's a clue or why not work day. So um, before you buy, give work day a try. Um, I thought it was just kind of catchy and, you know, again, I'm kind of a dork like that and I just, I like fun little phrases. So um, really reach out to me or reach out to my team if you have any questions about things you need to do of an HR nature um, that, you know, Workday might be able to do for you. Um, I find it really important to ask those questions and, and let me know what you're feeling because I can't fix it if I don't know it's broken or I can't replace it if you're paying for it and I don't know you use it. So um, my goal would be to try to get everyone to use Workday for everything. I know Workday is not a perfect solution. There's zero ERPs out there that do absolutely everything the way we want it to be done. Um, but I do find it's a really, one of the best tools I've ever worked with. Um, and I'm very passionate about that. And I certainly um, want to implore you to, to, to use Workday um, to its fullest so we get the biggest bang for our buck. I think that's important. Um, we know here at the university, we have limited budgets. And if we focus those resources of using Workday um, 
to its fullest, then you know, hopefully we won't have to spend money on some of those systems that we're doing HR things um, through that we have to pay extra for. Um, so I'm always very budget conscious. Um, I work in a poor department, human resources. Um, so, you know, we really try to use the system to its fullest. And next slide, please. So with that, um, that's it for me. Um, hopefully I've, I've been able to show you my enthusiasm. I'm super excited about this project and I can't wait to work with you all. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Sherry. Thank you so much, Becky. I am so excited about this functionality. So just, we're gonna enter our Q&A section of this presentation. And just a reminder, you can vote up the questions. We see we have a lot of great questions already. Uh, some of the questions can be accessed, some of the questions that have been answered, uh, that have typed answers, you can see in the answered tab um, within the question and answer section, in case you, you saw a question that went away, the answer may be in there. And then we're gonna get through as many as we can. And I am going to pass it to Ceresa Cruz, who is going to introduce herself and she's gonna help moderate the question and answer session. So welcome, Ceresa, thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Um, my name is Ceresa Cruz and it was mentioned previously that I am the chair of the CCAG group, the, the Campus Community Advisory Group that um, where I have been charged to ensure that your feedback is heard. Um, so that, that is my commitment to the campus community as well. All right, so we have our first question coming in and this is gonna be for Maureen Bender. Will the night vision assist HR in the completion of the employee compensation project? Employees have been stuck at the minimum salaries within their pay, pay grade for going on three years. Salary compression adjustments and review to increase salaries from the minimum to accurately represent experience, et cetera, were promised and never fulfilled in 2019. The workday itself will not help us move the needle on that. Workday is a technology platform that will take over many processes at UCF, as Becky went through and gave you some examples today, as well as many more. But the actual project to move to the next phase of the comp project is something that we certainly would like to do in HR and at UCF. I think it's really important that we continue down that role with that project. We need to have the resources to be able to do it. And we need to have, when I say resources, it's staff to help do the assessments that are needed, as well as do we have the budget to support making the changes? Those are not decisions that are in my wheelhouse necessarily in terms of me getting resources on the HR team or the money to address any compression issues, et cetera. So the answer that I'm gonna give you is, I would love to see us go down that path again and revive what we need to do for the compensation project. But all of that has to be taken into consideration with regard to the UCF budget and where we're at as far as the timing. So, but to answer the original question, Will Workday do that for us? Not really, um, but there are compensation processes in Workday that are different than they are currently in PeopleSoft, which will make managing compensation for leaders, supervisors, deans, directors easier. Great, thank you, Maureen. And that kind of leads into our second question, which is will Night Vision streamline department request for increases in employee salary within their pay grades? So that answer is yes, it can. Absolutely, it can. And Becky, we may want to talk a little bit more about that because that's really a technical design question. Um, sure. We're still, you know, going through a lot of those things, but within Workday, we design business processes um, and those business processes are configured. And so that would be a business process um, that we would have the functionality to turn on within Workday. So yes, it is it is capable of doing that. Great, thanks Becky. Mm -hmm. Just waiting for the next question to come in. Uh, Matt, this question is for you. Uh, there's two parts to the question. 
Can you address security and access concerns with protected private student data being housed in the cloud versus on, on site physically at UCF? I think, and they also specifically want to do a deeper dive on FERPA concerns. Yes. I can't, I'm just being smart, smarty pants there. Yes, I can address it. I've been been typing uh, vigorously into the chat. Uh, I encourage you to look at the workday security assertions, but beyond that, I have full faith and, and confidence that, that we have a trusted partner with Workday. Those security assertions, the SOC 1 audits, there's third-party audits and certifications. We live in a world where we are constantly, both the UCF infrastructure and our third-party firms like Amazon, Workday, whomever, Microsoft, they're under constant assault and they have massive investments, far beyond the investments that the state university systems can bring to bear that secure their institutions against foreign actors, criminal enterprise, et cetera. Additionally, there's contractual concerns that, and protections that they, we can't, they can't monetize our student data and they can't monetize our administrative data. So that data is purely host in the custody of Workday for the purpose of UCF administration, student matriculation, our analysis, it's not used for monetization purposes. So I, I, you know, I'm always concerned about security. Nothing's impenetrable. My comments in the chat were, you know, the NSA, the Office of Personnel Management, we can list thousands of corporations who have hosted on premises or in the cloud that have been violated and taken ransom and had data exfiltration. They do a good job. They have hosting services that are, that are across the nation. I think Sink just told me it was in Richmond, Virginia. There's a couple, I have to go back and look at the chat, but there's three different locations in the United States where they host their data. And I know they have backups on top of those, those major hostings. So you have geographical diversity in addition to those security protections. So one of the, the comments came in is, is uh, you know, what happens if we don't have access to the system? We have more access to the system because of the geographic diversity in the multiple hosting centers than if we did host it in one singular location at UCF, for example. So I, I, again, I have full faith and confidence. And, and, and I think one thing I'll, I'll part with, these companies, their whole model is a trust-based based model similar to the banking industry. They have an inherent desire and an inherent self-interest to protect our data, both for monetization, privacy violation, and breach. So this is a trust model. I, Workday has demonstrated their ability to do that along with Oracle, Microsoft. They're in, they're in the top tier of, of trust and privacy. Thank you. Thank you, Matt, I appreciate that. Uh, Becky, the next question is for you. One of the massive failures of UCF leadership is failing to actively invite and participate in actual user testing of software changes. Um, or they don't consult or take it seriously, the actual line, you know, frontline employees and how they'll have to do uh, their daily jobs. Can you speak to how we are addressing this in night vision? Absolutely, thanks, Teresa. Um, truly, um, you know, I know many of you across campus and I've worked with many of you. Um, and so it will be my goal to make sure that we are talking to you. I know just again, in these very early stages, um, I've reached out to several of you who um, I've worked with in the past, um, just to ask you simple questions um, about your day to day. Because if there's one thing I do know is I don't know everything. Um, and I don't pretend to know everything. So I feel like we've put a good structure in place on the team to make sure we get representation um, from other areas that, you know, don't reside within central HR, um, you know, by making sure we have those um, like Carla and Peggy, um, you know, to come in from other areas and help us out. But then in addition, um, you know, I think having CCAG is just going to really help us um, to make sure that we're talking to those frontline workers who are doing the work. Um, I know working with you, Seresa, I know you know your, your boots are on the ground and you're doing it every day. And so you are one of those folks that I reach out to quite um, often um, with questions. Um, and there are quite a few of you. So I think my goal would be as as we are ready to move into that next phase of just um, talking with CCAG and you know, making sure that um, you can join our meetings and, and join those discussions. Um, because again, um, the system isn't going to work if we can't 
try to meet the needs of the university period. So, um, and that definitely takes the discussion from the folks doing the work every day. Thank you, Becky. Uh, the next question is for Gerald. And this is regarding transparency. How will you make sure that the university employees and especially those employees that use the ERP feel that it is transparent? Well, that's an excellent question. And piggybacking on what Becky just shared, it has to be engagement with the campus. Forums like this, the work that you're doing, they are paramount. And as a matter of fact, that's something that would be my expectation. Um, and I do have a different lens, so to speak, being a new executive here and having done and implementing Workday, the HR portion at another campus, fairly large institution, an Ivy League institution that utilizes HCM for all of its human resources needs. And I'll just tie some things I heard in some, some of the questions. I read through all the questions, but things like lap, I, I can't even say the name right, lapers, lapers, um, I've never seen that. Um, I've not seen something like that in almost the last two or three campuses I've been. And um, we actually implemented it such that at Workday and Becky just went through it, the entire um, HR experience I could have done from my telephone. Um, it's not cumbersome. We could book our vacation as a supervisor. I was able to see when folks are taking advice and just go on, go in, click, approve. So those are the improvements we're talking about. But we are trying to get to a point where everyone understands where we are and inventory of what we have. And quite frankly, across the systems, be it HR or even the financial systems, we just have to get upgraded. We are kind of behind. Uh, in some instances, we're way behind in our general ledger, how it's set up, um, how we get financial analysis. So it runs the gamut. And my hope and my expectation is that as we move to make implementation decisions, that you as the frontline leaders will have input in it. I have heard about other projects that had started here before and didn't go through to fruition. My expectation here is that we will not have that. I will hurriedly say, however, we cannot end up in a mode where we are stuck in paralysis by analysis. We have to make decisions and we have to make those decisions in a timeline. And quite frankly, having done an implementation elsewhere before, it, not everyone is gonna like the decisions that are made because you're talking about changing culture. But at the end of the day, my expectation is that frontline voices will be heard and things taken into consideration. Uh, Matt Hall will tell us all the time, the number of applications and customizations that we have done to PeopleSoft is, is rather interesting. Even how we set it up back in 2003 from the chart of accounts that hinders us today to get timely and accurate reports on a monthly basis. We're actually doing some of the financial management of the institution by manually downloading data and manipulating it. Whereas Workday and other modern day um, systems allows you to do that holistically. So transparency is going to be key, but execution is also going to be something that we, we push and strive for as well. Thank you, Gerald, for setting that expectation. Next question is for Kathy Mitchell. Hey, Teresa. Hello. What is the timeline for implementation of the service enhancement transformation or set? Well, we haven't set all of those details yet. You know, we have to make some first, some basic decisions about what the service enhancement process will look like. Um, you know, we've talked about service centers. So, you know, some basic decisions would be, are there one, is there one service center as the consultants have recommended, or might there be multiple? And then the next decision would be, well, what services go into those one or maybe a couple service centers? You know, those are just decisions we've got to make soon. I mean, just as Gerald mentioned, sooner rather than later. But then how we implement those will be based on going to the campus community like CCAG, the cabinet, the um, provost council and dean's council and just say, what order, what timing, what services would work best for you? You know, that's when we start soliciting feedback and you know, developing the plan. 
Right now, we're just finishing up the assessment phase. It's, you know, what do we have right now? So that's based on the surveys that we've done, the interviews with the campus community. So we know what our current processes are. The next phase, and we've had the recommendations from Accenture. Next phase is mobilization, where we talk about, okay, how are we gonna implement this? And what's the roadmap look like? And then comes the implementation phase. So I expect most of this will be done before we go live, you know, by July of 2022. Some of it may take a little bit longer. It just, you know, that's to be determined. Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. Uh, Maureen. Maureen, the next question is for you. Uh, the set survey should have been sent out multiple times in order to ensure the answers received uh, were holistically correct. This survey seems to be like it will have a strong impact on how we move forward once night vision goes live. How did you ensure the responses were accurate? Thank you, Saressa. So when we sent out the night vision survey, one of the things that happened was your supervisor, it went from you, know, you and then your supervisor got an email to ask them to check the answers to make sure that they thought things were in line. And we also had a number of sessions ahead of time and our consultants were available to answer questions. We had office hours, we had um, sessions ahead of time to explain how the survey was to be filled out and what tips and tricks and what to watch out for and how to actually understand the questions that were being asked. So in terms of ensuring that the answers were correct, you know, it was a self-reported survey and all we can t do is take the information that the individuals filled out as correct. Um, although we had a huge response rate, which was great, it was almost 99%, which our consultants told us, well, you never see that um, in when you do these kinds of things. So we were very excited that we did get a good response and we're using that the data as well as the interviews as well as best practices to inform you know what we should do in terms of Accenture making the recommendations but then fitting that into what is our culture what will work here at UCF as one of our consultants has told me time and time again you know this is not um, out of the box model for service delivery there, this has to be set up to fit the culture of UCF and to help us achieve the goals that we have so in terms of was the survey answered properly, all we can say is we hope people filled it out honestly and that supervisors were able to review it to um, determine is it valid. Um, let you, me Marie. add to that. Um, we will use the data that was provided as we move into the, the mobilization phase and we start talking about how the service centers might be set up. We would go to you know College X and say, gosh, it looks like you have, you know, seven FTEs involved in this process. And, but that's only, or actually it might be 16 headcount, but only seven at full FTEs. Does that sound reasonable to you? So that if we moved this process to a service center, you would then have those FTE to do something else with. But anyway, it's, yes, it's that confirmation with the colleges, with the units on the FTE and headcounts for each process. Thank you, Caddy, for adding the data validation aspect. Yeah. Great. Um, I have a couple questions uh, for Matt. Ready. The elimination of paper forms slash processes can lead to longer and more complicated business processes in, in some cases. Paper forms turnaround time was quicker, say less in queues, unchecked, et cetera. Eliminating paper is not necessarily a productive result. It is just digital paper pushing sorting versus physical paper pushing sorting. Also, when the software goes down, everything stops. Value and diversity of business processes uh, between digital and physical methods. Can you comment on that? Yeah, there's a lot, I think, tied up in there. I think there's a personal, personal preference that I'm inferring from the question is that, that the, the person who asked the question has a preference for paper. That may be that you can check your form quicker on, a, on, a, on, a, on your local circumstance. But when I look at, you know, Deb, what she's doing at UCFIT, 
she spends three to four days reconciling and Karen Cobb's reconciling this mass amount of paper. So when you look at the totality of the business process from the point where you start the process to the point with the output, you may only see the one single form and it feels really good and, and kind and moving forward you know, very quickly. All of those forms aggregate on Maureen or aggregate on a, a business or finance officer somewhere in the organization and they've got a stack of them. I, I would suspect that the people who receive that stack would have a very different perspective than the person asking that question. Although I understand the, the, the spirit behind the question, having that paper you're something familiar with, check, go, you're done. But I would say the same thing's true if you go to your mobile phone that Gerald mentioned and check, you're done. The, the diversity goes to the fact that we have multiple data centers in support of, you know, I just got the word back from Tim Dyer at Workday. Workday has three data centers, Portland, Ashburn, Virginia are the primaries and there's one in Atlanta. And they've, those three business diversity you know, design set centers, they're able to move workloads from point A to point B where you know, I, the likelihood of it's going down, it's not impossible, but it's approaching impossible. Those availability levels are very high because they have a lot of geographic diversity. So the likelihood of Workday going down, and we can go back and look, I don't see that Workday or Oracle for that matter are in the cloud have taken a lot of availability hits. So the Online availability of these forms and services, I don't see that as an inherent problem. IT systems will go down, but pins also run out of ink. So there, there's just the normal mode of operation is that we have to take into consideration that this is a risk decision. It's an optimization decision of an entire business process, not one singular component or one step of the totality of the business process. And I think when you look at Maureen and Gerald's responsibilities, they have to aggregate the results from all these processes. And if they're dealing with massive amounts of process variation, massive amounts of the way in which things come into them to reconcile in a legal, a policy compliant way, it adds complexity and complexity adds cost and potential for inaccuracy to the system. And I don't know if Gerald and Maureen wanna um, jump onto that or not. Yeah, I'll, I'll just add a little bit. I understand the question very well. There is a, a ease of use and that's clearly understood. But if we design our business processes such that the processes are seamless across the functionality, let me give you one of the good examples that I'm learning. So for the past five months since I've been here, I have spent a tremendous amount of time in the details. Uh, I know my job is way up here strategy, but I, have, I saw enough for me to try to learn UCF's culture and how we do things. When you look at how we budget, look at how we set up our ledgers and how everything flows, they don't flow seamlessly. So you have, we have 13 colleges that might have 13 different ways to do things. Um, some of the issues at the high level in HR that Maureen and I are tackling right now is because certain things that I would argue should be standardized or not. So there, and then you'll hear from some of the deans will say, well, Gerald, what we need from the center is instruction. So I believe as we go through this process, it's not just implementing a new ERP system and digitizing a process. We first have to figure out the process that we want that fits with this organization, but more importantly, will allow us to do our work more effectively and efficiently. And right now there's a tension and a push pull between that. But I do believe uh, automation does drive efficiency but your point is well taken around the ability to just sign and move something forward. But there are bottlenecks that we create outside that most folks don't see when it gets time to do the processing. It is very manual and very labor intensive. And um, we just need to figure out a different way to get that done. <clears throat> Maureen, anything to add? Thank you. Uh, the next question is for you, Gerald, again. Considering all of the add-on systems, HR workflows, financial workflows, the new budget model, and we all need to keep doing our current jobs while working on this huge project, is the current timeline truly realistic? Is there some examples of other large university timelines and their success stories that could be shared with the campus community, maybe posted on the Night Vision website? Yeah. So a couple of questions, a number of things in there. I think the timing is, is right for UCF. And let me give you some context. Um, when we look at how we budget and the campus is gonna be hearing more about this in the weeks to come. 
And I can sit here today as the chief financial officer here, I cannot get data to manage how we financially operate. We don't have budget to actuals. Um, I am having to look at cash flow, cash flow modeling in order to make sure that money is in the right place at all times. That to me is problem number one. Um, how we budget, not learning how we budget, tying our budget to the bog and just doing it the same way we have done for years. It's now causing us a problem because we do not have the largesse of growth year over year. We were getting money year over year. So now we have to become more strategic because our enrollment will not continue to grow 2% per year, year over year. That, that's not going to happen prospectively. So how do we now know how to budget? And that's one of our challenges. We cannot go in and say strategically, if we have to reduce expenses, we can do it here, here, and here without hurting this, this, and that. Right now, we don't have that capability. That is not good for an institution our size, our complexity, and the gravitas that we have for the excellence in teaching and research that we do. That's the budget model. On the financial model, which is the ERP system, they're inextricably linked because how we have established our chart of accounts over the years, we're doing things here that quite frankly, I have never seen at another institution. For those of you that know a little bit about accounting, we have cash accounts distributed throughout units. So we're mixing and matching our profit and loss or statement of activities with balance sheet. That hinders our ability to know how someone is spending. The third thing that I would say and why it's important is the way we budget, we don't budget from the bottom up with expenses. Currently what we do is allocate revenues that are distributed by the state. Well, that only accounts for a section of what we need to run the institution. We don't build budgets for the entire $2 billion enterprise that we have. Those are some of the things that have to change. The challenge is the systems have to be able to support it. With all of that being said, is the timeline the right one? I believe it is because the way we do business from our process standpoint, the systems that undergird those processes, they are not aligned. And what we are doing currently, if I look at the results from the set, just to tie this all together, we have individuals that are touching very technical roles, tax, payroll, HR, finance, that are not adequately trained and have the capacity to do those roles. So I believe that if we can come together, figure out what those lines are, what our business processes are, we then invest in our people to bring them up to speed that will continue to drive the success that we need to have. Now, one of the things that you'll hear from me, I'm, we're trying to figure out ways for me as the SVP of administration and finance to communicate is that the campus needs to be educated about all these things. So when I listen to the deans and I listen to um, faculty, because I've been meeting with quite a bit of people, Ceresa and some of the other folks, when I listen to how they do things, there is not a common thread that runs through quite a number of them from both the HR side and the administrative side. So the timing is right in my estimation. It is a heavy lift and individuals are burdened. I understand that, I see them every day, but if we are gonna pivot coming out of this post COVID environment and post annual enrollment growth, we are gonna have to look at our business processes and our systems and make sure that they're integrated so we can have success. Thank you, Gerald. Uh, the next question is for Becky, and it's actually gonna be several questions around labors, which is leave absence and pay exceptions requests, Gerald. Uh, there's an acronym for everything. Um, with the vacation time off request, uh, is there an email prompt for the supervisor to check the portal for the request? Um, just a concern about missing you know, messages in the portal. Sure. Um, yes, the system will generate an email that will go to the supervisor, and then a task will also appear within Workday. So they'll get the notification two ways. And um, as Gerald kind of indicated earlier, 
from his past experience, he can open that task right from his phone and approve that vacation um, without even signing into his uh, computer. So yes, notification will go out and um, there's links within the notification to, to do the task as well. Thank you, Becky. Um, will this also, will the time system also be used for student employees? Uh, yes. So it will be used for everyone um, getting a paycheck from UCF. Um, so uh, we, we are still, you know, as I said earlier, you know, working around chronos and making um, decisions for external systems um, that might be used instead of paper. Um, such as Kronos, and we have a few other ones, um, the ISP one and the FSEC one as well, but we haven't made those decisions yet if, um, if you know, those systems will still be in place or not, but for the majority, yes. Okay, um, and by requesting this time off or, or um, yeah, requesting that time off and it gets approved, does that eliminate the labor? Yes, it does. It totally eliminates the labor. So you will, um, you will have access to your balances and everything within the system. So you'll be able to see how much time you have. Um, you will make those requests. Um, they will automatically flow into the time tracking so that you know when that pay period comes around, if you request vacation off a month in advance, and um, when that pay period gets here, you know, that, that request will default in too. So um, yes, no more labor. And completely hypothetical, but if I requested eight hours of annual leave and then I end up working the entire day anyways, am I gonna have a chance to change that later? Yes, absolutely. You will be able to make those changes. Um, we know that that definitely happens. And so, um, and we're also going to, I think, um, still playing with it, but we're also going to allow for for some retro changes that are necessary as well. You know, if someone forgot to uh, report a day or, um, you know, uh, for some reason, someone forgot to punch in and punch out and didn't get paid for a day, you know, all of those adjustments can be made. Thank you, Becky. Uh, Gerald, I have another question. Why is there budget annually to grant faculty promotions, but not staff promotions? That's a very good question. I, I am not aware of that. I do know one thing, um, each of the budgets. So let me give a little bit of a budget tutorial, a little bit of budget insight here. How we budget here at UCF currently is not a budget in sense that you would think of where you assess all of your costs, build your costs together to get a budget up. What we do here is what's called revenue allocation. So each of the 13 institute uh, colleges in years past, we have gotten an allocation of revenues that's approved by the state. So we're gonna go through that in June. Uh, and then there, there are auxiliary sides of things, they do a little bit more bit, uh, closer job to, to true budgeting that we most people would think of. So each individual college will be getting an allocation of revenues and each dean historically has done a good job of managing those budgets. So then interactions will be with the provost, et cetera, and the deans will drive what happens in that regard in consultation with um, Maureen and things of that nature. Um, what we are hoping to do prospectively is to build budgets from the bottom up. We have a new budget model that is coming in play that is going to drive how the institution is funded. So the deans and the schools will be the revenue drivers for the institution, but it goes through a new process, a process such that we know and the president and the provost knows before the fiscal year starts, how much is potential expenditures going to be across the board. And then we bring to bear the revenues and then we see if we have enough to have a balanced budget. When you heard me mention earlier that we're gonna go through a culture shift, this is going to be one of the biggest ones because what has happened is you have some areas that probably, uh, I say it this way, more equal than others. And that happens over time, build up over time and doing things exactly the same way. This is part of our transparency that we will also be sharing as the new budget model unfolds. When the budget is done, it's going to be shared 
and everyone can see how costs are built, how revenues are assigned, and quite frankly, how costs are allocated across the entire institution. So that is going to be a change, but it's not such that funds are set aside for faculty and not for staff. And I know Mike Johnson is on the call. I hope maybe he would like to add something. And, and, and also faculty promotions, they are bargained for as a part of the collective bargaining agreement, which quite frankly, we don't control. I would also like to add something after Provost Johnson talks about promotions for A&P and USPS employees. I'll say how it looks from where I sit. Um, thank you both. Faculty careers are odd compared to other um, paths in the workforce. There's the maximum opportunity for two promotions in their life, um, unless they choose to go into administrative jobs like some foolhardy people do. Um, you know, once to associate professor or the equivalent for instructors and lectures, once to professor or the equivalent for lectures and instructors. We do bargain it and it's obligated um, on a certain time scale for the for the at least the first promotion for the assistant to associate professors. And we can predict the rate. Um, on average for the second promotion. So it's a it's an oddly different process. It has something of a clock on it. Um, and I think that's what makes it different from any other kind of job where, um, you know, you seek opportunities when they come along and apply if, if you think you're ready and, you know, try to get to a supervisory or a higher position. And it's, so it's, I will just describe it as odd and different. Um, and bargained. Those are the three reasons I suppose that we we always know it's coming and always build it into the budget. Um, whereas to some extent, what goes on in other positions is over time sort of replacements of people as, as um, someone steps away from us. It's not usually expansion. It's generally as somebody moves out of a given position, others are needed to fill it and searches or opportunities come along that way. So it is somewhat different. And I'll, I'll just stop there, let Maureen go forward. So thank you, Provost Johnson. And yeah, so faculty positions are very different. And as he said, there are two opportunities for faculty to be promoted, and that would be to associate or full professor. And that's that. As far as USPS and AMP employees, if you receive a promotion, in title and scope of responsibility, you absolutely would get an increase. So a and and USPS employees theoretically have more opportunities to be promoted because they're applying for maybe a, an open position or their duties have increased such that they're doing more than 30% more than they were in their other role. And so they're reclassified and they receive a promotion from that. So it's different because we're different employee groups within an edu higher education. And that is how it works on the faculty side, two times in their career. Um, they, there are awards that faculty members can receive for teaching, research, and engagement. That, that is bargained as well. However, from a pure promotion standpoint, anytime an employee would receive a promotion, a and P USPS, they would receive an increase in pay. Thank you. Um, and we are actually at our final question, um, which is gonna be Gerald, and there may be others that are gonna to wanna to comment on this one as well. Uh, but what kinds of lessons have we learned from the IT centralization that will help prevent similar delivery issues with SET? Excellent question. I saw that in the chat. And um, I'll say, I, I, I wasn't here for the last one. But Mike Johnson probably will, will share a little on this one as well. But he and I received a note about three days ago about concerns about this very thing. So I, I, I met with some of the members of my team and I just asked them, please help me to understand what happened. Now, the, what, what the takeaway from that in my mind was how did we socialize this on campus, leadership, and quite frankly, collaboration. And this would be a very good way for me to kind of leave a, a message of positivity as we go. We are all in this thing together about UCF. One of the things that's gonna be difficult with a transformation like this 
is trust and culture, right? So if I was to be selfish at another institution I was, I was blessed to be a part of, uh, much larger than, than UCF in terms of money, I ran service centers, accounts payable, bill processing, procure procurement, strategic sourcing, worked well. We had close to, I believe the number was about 80,000 vendors and it flowed. But it all came into being because everyone was together in terms of sharing the information, informing the campus, and then really having a sense of assessments, inventorying what we have, assessing what we have, and bringing a dispassionate tone and conversation to it is always tough. So I believe the lesson that we learned based on the anecdotal um, responses I got from some of my colleagues who were here, that's the route that we have to take. And that's why I'm so excited about these open forums, what Ceresa is doing with the CCAG, Maureen, Sherry, Kathy, going around talking to people as much as they can, because if we don't all get together, it's going, the lift is gonna be that much heavier. And I believe that's, that's going to be the difference is having everyone on the same page as things move forward. Will this be the panacea that oftentimes people put out? Like I, I was told IT said, you'll be able to do this, 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 and this, and everyone bought into it. I think we now have a CIO in Matt Hall who is very bright, very energetic, but he's also very practical from the time that I've spent with him. And that's what's gonna be needed to make sure that we get these things done. A great team here. We just need to make sure that the campus is informed and your voices are indeed heard. And I think we will be successful. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. No ERP implementation I've ever seen goes 100% smooth. But if we have the guardrails and we are communicating effectively and closing communication loops, I think we will, we not think, I know we will be successful. And I don't know if Mike or Matt has anything they want to add to that. It's, it's a, you know, I've done a few of these and trust is a, is a pivotal element. So one of some of the comments were, are we really going to be heard? Are we really going to get our voices heard? Are we really going to be able to do things transformational? Workday itself, just a modern user interface is completely transformational. We will have to take, and I want to be candid about this, and Sherry's kicking us forward. We need to use this stuff out of the box to the extent that we can to get it over the, over the finish line in the amount of budget and time we have. And then we move into continuous process improvement, sort of Six Sigma analysis mode after that. But we will hear you, and we will do our best to take everyone's view into account. I know that from working with Gerald. That, that man listens, so we're in a good place. Maureen listens. So I know this for a fact. So I'm excited to hear about it, Gerald. Thank you so much. I'm sure I'll just make this comment. I think we learned from the past. For example, the Huron Research Suite project taught us um, really good techniques for making sure we got the information we need when we implement other big changes. Um, this is a big set of changes and we'll need input and contradiction and disagreement to arrive at good results. Great, thank you. All right, thanks everyone so much for being here. We have uh, one more slide and Saressa, thanks so much for moderating the questions and thanks to our panelists as well. We just wanted to encourage you to go to the website. There will be, be frequent updates uh, about HR and the functions of HR as well as other functions and other areas of night vision beyond workday. Uh, please sign up for the newsletter. It's a monthly newsletter. Uh, the URLs are on your screen. And this slide deck will also be posted on the website in the next couple of days, as, long as, as well as the recording. So thank you all very much. Thank you to the panelists. We really appreciate all your interest and your support. And we look forward to talking to you again soon. <laughs>